All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. We're going to get started here. My name is Nick. I'm with the Sales and Business Development uh, Department here at 36 Picks. You have my contact information down here. Same number as 36 Picks, and you can reach me at the extension 245, as well as my email being down here. I will uh, put up this slide again uh, at the end of the uh, webinar so you can uh, note it down. So for the duration of the actual webinar, I'm going to be muting your audio input just so we can have a nice smooth session. If ever you do have a question or a comment, you can simply mark it down within your chat box at the bottom of your GoToMeeting application. All right, so here at 36 Picks, we have solutions for green screen. We also have blue screen extraction that is possible. And we are also planning on coming out during the spring season with a white and gray screen solution. We have two services here. We have our full service, which is an outsource option uh, where you can send us your images and we will make sure that they are done on time and in proper quality and sent back to you. And we also have the Cloud KO, which is a do-it-yourself solution, which we will be demoing today. A bit of information on the full service side. We have the best quality out there. We are the uh, market leaders. Our turnaround time is between 24 to 48 business hours. Usually it's closer to, to the 24 business hours, but in peak seasons like October and November, then you're closer to 48. Uh, the main um, advantage of the full service is the ease of mind for you. So you don't have to worry about doing the extractions. We take care of everything, make sure it's in good quality and that you get it back on time. A couple points on the Cloud KO do-it-yourself side. Um, each check that you have is capable of doing to 7,000 and even more images per day. We actually had a fun little challenge going on with some of our customers uh, the last year. We, we, we checked their, their tech stats and we actually saw that some of them were close to 10,000 images per day. So that's quite impressive. Uh, with the do-it-yourself option, of course, you're able to control your own turnaround time. So all you have to wait for is the upload and the download process. You are also able to obtain performance reports so you can know how effective you are within the application and if your business is on the right track. This is a web-based application, so there's actually no license fees, no contracts, no software installation, and there's no minimum order fees. We have a couple partners out there that we work with, notably Kodak and Photolinx uh, on their workflow platforms, DP2 as well as Flow. So the partnership we have there is that we are fully integrated within the workflow. You are capable of sending us images through our plugin. Um, so that saves you the, a lot of time on the upload and the download, and also it saves a lot of information. If you are not on those platforms, uh, no worries. You can easily send us images through an FTP. We recommend FileZilla. So let's get started. We're going to go see the actual application. I'm here with our lead trainer, Kathy, who's going to be uh, taking over once we're in the editor, but I'll be the one talking with you guys the whole time. So let's check it out. So this is a web-based application, as I mentioned. So the first thing you would do is go to this website, app.cloudko.com. We would assign you a username as well as a password. And then you're within the application, just like that. So this is the interface of the actual process. Um, the workflow goes from left to right on these tabs. So right now we are in the first tab, which is an all tab. It shows every job that's within the platform. The next one to the right is the to process tab. This is where your job would be found while it's being uploaded. So you would see, for example, job number one, 70% uh, of 100 complete. So you would see it uploading here. Once it's uploaded, it would automatically move over to the two mask tab. And that's where we're actually doing the extraction. Uh, within this tab, we have a couple of features. So you can see that we have 104 images within this job to view. Um, we actually have a little priority field here. Some of you guys will be using text and some of you will be doing the extractions yourselves. If you have texts like we do here, we use a system to prioritize jobs. So let's say you want this one done first, you could put a four, you could assign a two here, and so on. So let's get started. So let's take demo job number two over here. To get within the job, you simply hit the KO button right here, and you're launched within it. 
So we have two parts within the application. The first one is the viewer. The goal of the viewer is to identify the images we're going to have to edit and the ones where the algorithm did a good job and we can keep good as is. We have up here some information. We're on image one of 104. We have 104 undefined images. So we want to define all images. So the goal here is to have zero of 104 and we have zero of 104 selected to be edited afterwards. This icon here uh, works as a gauge to know how you've assigned the image. So right now we have a blue question mark. This identifies it as undefined. All right, so for the four files we have over here, we have the original image, which is shot on green screen. The next file over is what the algorithm has rendered. So you can see that there's actually a difference within the green of that shirt. So this image will need to be edited. And the reason is because he is wearing green. This file here is a background file. So this identifies if there would be any wrinkles or shadows on the background, this would pop up with the green noise around it and it would let you know that you need to do some editing there because you can edit your backgrounds within the application. This final file here is the most important one. It's the one that lets you know who's wearing green or has green on their person. It could be either a t-shirt, it could also be a prop. So anything white represents green. So obviously the green background comes through as white, but we can see that this subject is wearing a green shirt and we're gonna to wanna to tag him to be edited. All right, so how you maneuver through the viewer. We have the four arrow keys. So quite simply, if you hit the down arrow key, you move on to the next image without identifying it as to edit or good as is. So you can see that I'm on the second image. Um, the unidentified count hasn't changed as well as the selected. And if I hit my up arrow, I just move back up without actually identifying anything. If I do want to select an image to be edited, it's the right key that, we'll, that we will be using. And if I want to tell the system that this knockout is good as is, I will be hitting the left arrow key. So what I'm looking for here is white within this file and anything on the background on this file. So since there's white here, I hit my right key. Now if I go back up to that image using my up arrow key, I can now see that there's a black box surrounding this, uh, these four files, and that means that we've selected it to be edited. So I'm just gonna take my down key and come back to this image. All right, so we can see that this subject has no white within his body. The knockout is good uh, when we're talking color, uh, green screen to the, the, the subject, but we do have this little fold coming through here that's identified by this green noise. It's kind of hard to see on this image right here, but we do have a little shadow coming through. So I would tag this guy as an edit. So I'm gonna hit my right arrow key. Again here, we have some white on his shirt. So this will be tagged as to edit. Same thing here on his tie, he's got some green. So we want to hit that with the right arrow key. Again here, right arrow because of the white on the subject. She has white here, but obviously if we look at the original, we can see it's just the background peeking through and that the algorithm did a good job at identifying that as a green screen and knocking it out. So here I would click my left arrow to tell the system that it's good to go. So we won't actually have to edit it. It would be saved directly to the cloud as a good knockout. So I'm hitting my left arrow key here. If I come back up, I can see that there's a red X on the icon. That is an ident identification that we've selected as it as good to go. All right, so here we have a lot of noise on the background. We're gonna to wanna to edit that out. So I'm gonna hit my right arrow key. Here, he's good to go, left arrow. Here we have the turquoise on her tutu. So that's coming through here. We're gonna to wanna to select this with the right arrow key. Again here, this is good. So I'm gonna hit my left arrow, right arrow here, right arrow here, left arrow, right arrow, left arrow, right arrow. So pretty straightforward here. If ever you're seeing white within this file, you're gonna select it with the right arrow key. And same thing here, if you have anything in the background, you're selecting with the right arrow. So this is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna pass the keyboard over to Kathy. Uh, she's a tech with a lot of experience, just to show you guys how fast you can actually go through these images. So we've done 17 images. Uh, we have about 99 left to, uh, undefined, and Kathy's gonna zoom through them just to show you how fast it could be done. So what she's doing here 
is she's mostly just hitting the left arrow as good to go. If she sees a white within this file, she's going to come back up with her up arrow and then select it as to be edited. So she's going really fast here. Whenever she sees white, she comes back up to it and selects it with the right arrow key. And there we go. She covered those 99 images in no time. That was not even a minute. So once you're at the bottom of your image queue uh, within the viewer, this little window pops up and it asks you to go to the editor, which we'll do. All right, so here's the editor. Same kind of information up here. We're at image one of 104, undefined 19, and we've selected 30 images to edit. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Photoshop, you'll recognize these tools. We have a lasso tool, a wand tool, and a brush tool. So the first thing to do when you get within the editor is to hit your backslash key. That's the one located under the backspace and over the enter key. So I hit it. And then I can see that it brings forward all the green. So it, the mask did a great job bringing back the, the green on the t-shirt, but we can see that it brought back a little bit of green here and a little bit of green right here. So using my brush, uh, hotkey for the brush is the B key. So if I hit B, I'm actually going to toggle to the green brush. That gives you the ability to bring back green pixels. If I hit Control Z, it undoes it. If I hit B again, then I've got my red brush and I can actually remove green pixels. So I'm just going to simply come up to the t-shirt, remove those green pixels and that's it. If you hit your C key, you can actually put in different backgrounds and you can see that the detail on this one is quite good. Our software is really good at retaining the detail around the hair or any detail around the clothing. Um, so that's just a showcase of that right there. Once, the image is, you're, once you're happy with the image, you simply hit F8 and it saves it to the cloud. All right, so this subject here, if I hit my backslash key, I can see that there's no actual green uh, on him. So the mask did bring a bit of green back along his arm, so I could simply just get in there, edit that out. But the reason that we brought him in, if I change the background to white, we can see that shadow coming through here. So, as I said, you can actually edit the background layer within the application. So we have our two layers here. This is our green layer, so this affects anything with green pixels or blue if you were doing a blue screen job. And here is our background layer. So once I click down here, I'm actually affecting the background. So if I take my brush and simply click here, I remove the background shadow, and that's it. The image is good to go. So I save with F8. All right, so backslash key, bring forward my green. This is a great image to showcase the lasso tool. So the mask brought back that logo properly, but it brought a bit of green along his shoulder and his arm. So what we want to do is select this logo with the lasso, and this effectively tells the system to only retain the green within the selection. So the hotkey for the lasso is F12, and you'll see all that green disappear around that shoulder there. Here, I'll do it again. So select this area, hit F12, and all the other green disappears. You can put in different backgrounds, and it looks good. I'll take a second here to show you guys. You can come into the Edit tab up here, go under Shortcuts, and you can see all the shortcuts, which are... Uh, you are able to edit them if ever you are comfortable using another one that you were using before on another platform, so you can change it to your preferences. So he's good. I'm going to save with F8. Same scenario here. We want to retain that green within that tie, so I'll simply take my lasso tool, circle his tie, hit F12, and that's it. That simple. Save with F8. Again, uh, the mask brought back that green within the W, but we have some green on the shoulder and down here. So I'll take my lasso, circle the emblem, hit F12, and that's it. Save with F8. All right, so we have brought this fellow in here because if I go to my 
background, we can see that there's a lot of noise happening here. Sometimes they'll bring an image in and you're not too sure why you brought it in. You can always come to your layers here and if you click on the top right icon here, you can see the original. So I can see there's a bit of green here, I'll just knock that out. And now we're going to work on that background. So here I'll showcase the wand tool. If I click on a silhouette, we can see that it finds the outline. Now once we have the outline, we'll go on our background layer and the hotkey for the wand is F11. Once I hit F11, it will clean up this whole background in one click of a button. And there we go. So if I zoom out, we see that it's good. I hit D to deselect and then he's good to save. All right, I'll pass the keyboard over to Kathy. She'll show you a couple more images and then after actually, now that I'm uh, thinking of it, we're going to treat a couple images that you guys have submitted in after. So we can see that this little girl here is wearing a sheer material. So she has a green tutu and the background is coming through as well. So this could be a tricky image to uh, deal with usually. If Kathy goes in with just her brush, she's taken away too much green and it's actually taken away from that tutu. So what we can do is we have an opacity tool here and a hardness tool. She's actually lowering in it, which will make it, um, which is telling the application to hit that green pixel less hard. So she'll click once and drag over it in one move, and it's only taking away a bit of that green. So she keeps that sheer look to it. So if she's changing her backgrounds there, you can see the background coming through compared to the left side. So she's clicking once and dragging over. And that's it. So the opacity tool and the hardness tool are great to uh, deal with sheer materials or material with holes in them. So here we have the same deal. We just want to retain the green around his collar. She use the lasso tool and hit F12. That's it. Again, same thing, using the lasso and F12. Again, here she's using a lasso. She could as easily use the brush and just brush up the, uh, the subject's shoulders, but that would probably take a little more time. So the lasso is quick. All right, so if you look at the original image here, Kathy, we can see that the green is really close to the background, so the mask had a bit of trouble bringing back that, that foreground green. So first thing she'll do is knock out the green that shouldn't be there. And then she'll simply hit the B key to switch over to that green brush and she'll paint the pixels back in. And that's it. Here we brought him in because he had green on his shirt. So we just have to knock out a bit of green around his collar. Same thing here. Just missing a bit of green around the collar. Um, since the brush is a circle, it's easy to do the collars. You just select one that's the size of the collar and you click once. All right, here we have a little spot. Kathy could either go in with her brush or she could use the wand tool, which is m more efficient when you're going into those little areas. Saves with F8. All right, so here we have a case where his green shirt wasn't fully brought back in by the mask. So we see that the colors are close. But once she paints it in, she's not actually worried about painting back the, the background because she's then going to use her wand and the tolerance tool, which simply just tells the wand to not go towards the, the different shades of green. And she's going to use the wand tool to find the outline and then knock it out with F11. So it's quite simple. You're going through the application and you're using the three tools to either um, brush it out, uh, find the outline and knock out that outline, or use the lasso to retain an area with the green. So here it looks like we got everything, but if you change the backgrounds, you can actually see that there's some green missing from the hat. So that's the best way to sometimes look, uh, what have I missed? What am I supposed to have in green on the subject? All right, so here it's quite simple. We want to keep that green within the flower petals. She's using the lasso, hits F12, and we move on. Same thing here.
All right, so here we had a good job of retaining the green within that plaid design. And we're just going to clean up around the arms. Same scenario here. Actually, the mask did a good job. No editing needed. Here we'll simply retain that green with the lasso tool. Hit F12. And that's it. Same thing here. Instead of using the lasso, we're just using the brush. All right, here we have some green within the truck, but we can see that there's a lot of spill on that bench and within that wool. So we're simply just going to select the area we want to keep the green within. Hit F12, and it's going to take care of all the spill. There we go. Same scenario here. And there we go. So here we want to find the outline as we want to keep that, uh, that green within that dress shirt. We have a bit of specks of green out there. Oh, Kathy found a sneaky little area right there. And then she's going to hit F11 and all the green is going to disappear. Now there seems to be something left there. I think it's on the background. So Kathy is just going to switch to the background layer. Control L is the hot key to get to your background. If ever you guys decide to go with the application, uh, there is a complementary training that comes with it, so don't worry about remembering all those hotkeys and whatnot. So here we have a bit of a tricky scenario. Since it, because of the hair, we can't use the wand tool to differentiate the silhouette. So what Kathy's gonna do is she's gonna take her brush, she's gonna click once, and then she holds the shift key. And all she has to do is click higher, and it will follow the line of the brush so you can get that nice smooth edge. So again, I'll repeat it once we get to the other side. So she's clicking once, she's holding shift, and then wherever she clicks, the line will be connected to make that straight edge. Instead of trying to have to, uh, to, to manually make a straight edge, this simplifies the process. Kathy, I don't know if you want to change background and just show the detail that's left in the hair. So our algorithm is really good at retaining that detail. There's another little area there. Whenever you have a hole like that, the wand tool is uh, the best way of going at it. And she saves with F8. All right, Kathy simply just picks out the logo here with the lasso once again, hits F12, and that image is done. All right, so the mask did a good job at retaining the green on her dress. Uh, we're just going to go and clean up the, the, uh, the arm there. We seem to, again, have that fly on the background, so Kathy's going to take that background layer and go fix it up. Cleans it up, and that's it. There's a couple of holes there between her arm. You always have to make sure that that selection is properly done or else there's going to be some greens left. So you just simply click it twice if ever it's not well selected. And there we go, F8. All right, here we need to keep that green within that dress and just clean up the hair. Just be careful when you go around the dress. There we go, that's it. All right, so when you get to the bottom of the actual editor, a window pops up again, and it asks you to either continue editing images or open to the viewer. So we'll go back to the viewer. And since we've selected all the images within the viewer, it's asking you, do you want to stay in the viewer or exit this job? We're going to exit this job. Now, this little uh, feature here permits you to tell the application if you're going to return. So if you do decide to say, I will return, it saves all the selections you've done. And if not, you click I will not return. Uh, and then that gives you the opportunity to maybe put another tech on it the next day. So I'm not going to return. All right, so we'll just complete the uh, workflow here. We're going to refresh. So this is the job we just did. Now that it's complete, we can now move it to the to validate tab. So that's what we're going to do. The to validate tab is somewhere where only a supervisor would have access to. Uh, the way we use it here is if we have new techs, 
maybe the first uh, 10 or 15 jobs they do will have a supervisor validate their job. So basically you just hit the KO button, you go within the application and you, you just have access to the viewer and you make sure that all the knockouts are properly done. So it's a bit of a quality control area. Once that's done, you move over here and you just hit the to transfer tab. And that moves it over here. And this is where it's actually moving back down. So you see two of 104 completed and it would proceed like this. And once that's done, it moves over to the to download tab where it's downloaded back down onto your computer. Um, jobs stay within the application for two weeks. So let's say you bring it back down and you realize, oh no, I have some green left where there shouldn't be green or vice versa. Then you are able to come within the job, simply click here and workflow status, you click here, and you move it back to two masks. So within two weeks, you wouldn't have to repay and re-upload the job. It would actually be within the application and you can access it again. So that's a nice feature. And if at past the two weeks, the jobs are all archived so that you can have a record of what you've done. I'll show you two little things before we move on to the images you guys submitted. Um, we have our help and support tab here. We can have access to Cloud KO Guides, which is a bunch of information on how to be more proficient with the application. Uh, you also have our Support Center, where you can submit, view, and support uh, tickets, so you can write to our development team or anybody that can help you. Um, you also have more guides here. And you could also always just shoot uh, an email towards me or Kathy, and there's no problem there. I was also talking about the user reports earlier on. So if I go into the user report, we can see that demo job number two is the one we were working on right now. Uh, it tells us who the username is, that we're on a test account, so that's what pops up here. We spent 19 minutes on the job. We covered 103 images, which is prorated to 326 per hour. We fixed 29 masks, which is again prorated to 92 masks an hour. And our edit ratio was 28%. That means we edited 28% of the images we went through. Usually for the industry, we notice that it's between 17 and 20 percent. Uh, since this is a test job or a demo job, it's a little higher. But if ever you're seeing that number high on your application, it might mean that you're opening too many images and there is a possibility you could be going faster. Or it could also be that you just have more uh, green within your subjects than the, than the industry does. So we'll go back to jobs. Uh, I'll give it over to Kathy and she's going to cover a couple of images that were submitted to us prior to the demo. So here we have a young man here playing the guitar. Uh, we can actually see that there was a good job retaining everything in there. So Kathy selected them using the right arrow key. And there we go, we're opening them up. So we can see that it did a great job keeping that green within the shirt. She's simply going to use her lasso tool, select the shirt and hit F12 and the rest of the green disappears. Uh, there's a bit of green left there within her arm and her shirt. She used the wand tool, hit F11, and that was it. So she saves with F8. Again, same scenario here. Use a lasso tool, make sure you retain that shirt. And that's it. Here we're just going to use the brush to clean up that amp. Have a bit of green around her arm, around her hair as well, which we'd simply fix. And that's it. Save with F8. Alright, so those were those three images, and I think we have two more or three more. Yeah. So here we can see that there's actually no white within this image. Um, if you wanted to, you could simply crop that background out. Um, we'll also show you, let's say you wanted to edit that out instead of cropping it. We'll select it to go show you guys. But these are clean knockouts. You wouldn't be selecting them for green. You would only be selecting them to knock out that background. So here she's hitting Control L to switch over to her background layer as shown down here, and she simply knocks out 
everything that's not green screen. And there we go. You don't have to crop now. You can see that the detail is good in the hair. Check that with different backgrounds. And you save with F8. All right, so that's it for the actual demo of the application. We're gonna move on to pricing. Uh, go back to the PowerPoint right here. All right, so we have three pricing tiers for the actual two services. We have less than 10,000, 10,000 to 100,000, and these are images per year, and 100,000 plus images. For the full service, it's 45 cents in this tier, and 35 cents for the do-it-yourself application, 35 cents for 10,000 to 100,000 images, 25 cents on the do-it-yourself side, and 100,000 plus images per year on the full service is 25 cents and 15 cents on the do-it-yourself. So it's always 10 cents less when you're doing it yourself. Uh, on the full service side, we do have some specialty charges. If ever you need a background knocked out, we charge an extra 50 cents. So let's say you were at 45 cents, it'd be 45 cents plus 95. If you have full body images or a job where everybody's wearing green, for example, a graduation or a sports team, then it's a dollar an image. So it's not a dollar plus 45, it's just a dollar. And then group shots are $2. On the do-it-yourself, there is no specialty fees or charges as you are doing your own labor. So that's it for the webinar. We're now going to open up the session to questions, if you do have questions. And you also have my contact information here. If you want to, after the, um, the, the session, you can send me images shot on green screen, and we'll gladly knock them out free of charge. All right, so that's it. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.